Hey guys, how's it going? Now, the reason I'm laying down is multiple fold. One, I'm at my in-law's house. We're visiting for the weekend. But two, and kind of funny, I always heard from people, I want to make money in the stock market while I'm asleep. You kind of can, um, especially when you have algorithmic trading. But let's focus on the fun part of today, which is the moonshot code. Now, high level, moonshot is just Quant Rocket's version of a backtesting piece of software, right? It's just open source written in Python. You can go read about it. The cool thing about it is it kind of gives you like this template outlay and you kind of just fill in the methods and go from there. Um, the big thing about Moonshot, there's a couple. Uh, the first thing is if you want to run a back test, you have to have a Moonshot directory in the file right here. These exclamation marks just run like they're in the console. Look, it even tells you exclamation marks in text allows you to execute inside the notebook and this is our umd.py we'll get there in a second that's going to be our actual code um, let's go through how it works and notice when i refresh i now have a moonshot directory and the umd is inside of it um, it stands for up minus down and this is how a moonshot backtest works um, you can again read through but here's kind of the core components you have a class met you have a class and you can name the class whatever you want this says up minus down it truly doesn't matter if you name it i've named them just random things the class name doesn't matter the main thing is it has to inherit from moonshot right here the big thing is the code name has to be unique so this is like i'm going to name this algorithm for this back test this right? so right now it's called umd which stands for up minus down you do have to have a unique code name all these other guys you'll notice like momentum ranking period gap those are the same as the things we just researched in our prior notebook, they're simply moved up to be class variables at this point. The look back window, the momentum window, that's for a parameter scan for the future. The top n percent and the rebalance interval, the rebalance kind of self-explanatory, we're gonna rebalance on a monthly cadence. The top n percent, this algorithm is gonna change slightly. We're not simply just buying the stocks that have good momentum. We're also gonna short the stocks that do not have good momentum for that day. So. We'll get to that as we get into the UMD and the rest of this, I guess, outlay for this moonshot strategy is that you can inherit and try a million different algorithms. Um, it's kind of one of my favorite things to do, um, especially if I'm just tweaking universes, tweaking databases like I like all the other code. You'll notice that I have a class here, which is up minus down demo and it's just inheriting from you up minus down. So now we have like two layers of inheritance. We have moonshot up minus down inherits from moonshot, right? Up minus down. And now it's essentially the exact same um, algorithm, except now I've renamed this guy UMD demo. I've just changed the database, the universe, and I've added a commission class. And by me, I, again, I mean, Brian, when he wrote this research, right? He's added a commission class, which I think he calls half a penny uh, per uh, stock traded. So let's actually go into the umd.py imports, moonshot, per share commission, all that fun stuff. You'll notice that the code is umd, everything that you just saw in the last guy. The big thing is these couple of methods. You have this prices to signals method, you have signals to target weights, target weights to positions, and positions to gross returns. Those are kind of the four core components of things you have to fill out every time. So this price as a signal is not something that I named. This is naturally a class method and you are required to fill it out with the strategy code. The price as the signals is really what you do most of the work in. Uh, you can in target weights and positions, but usually price as the signals is like, where's my logic? Like how am I gonna you know, buy a stock? How am I gonna sell a stock? All that fun stuff. So you'll notice everything looks pretty similar. I have closes, I get the returns, I'm going to rank the top stocks. I'm going to short the bottom stocks and we'll get to how that actually happens in a second. The longs notice it's the top ranks less than the percentage. The shorts are the bottom ranks less than the percentage. I actually had to check this out really fast for myself because you're like, wait, how can they both be less than? If you come into here um, and you look at top ranks and bottom ranks, the top ranks is this top guy right here. It's all the guys that had the best momentum are actually getting the lowest rank right here. So by lowest rank, I mean like lowest ranked percentage. So right here, this is Apple, for example. 
So he actually had great momentum. So he's going to be one of the guys we buy less than 50%. We're going to buy this guy and we're going to buy this guy. For the bottoms, it's the complete opposite. So notice that this guy had a really high rank on the top ranks. Well, on the bottom ranks, he's going to have a really low rank. So this is going to be a guy that we short. This is going to be a guy that we short, right? So we're going to going to buy some and short some, right? Um, pretty traditional type of strategy, right? The guys at the top of our list we buy, the guys at the bottom of our list we short, um, and hopefully there's some convergence in alpha along the way. You'll notice this is just a moonshot specific. Um, at this point, you would have a bunch of trues and falses in your data frame, like is it above or below this guy, right? These would be Booleans. You convert them to ones, zeros, and negative ones. That's how moonshot and really just most APIs take it. One means go long, aka buy a stock. Zero means like don't do anything, right? Just keep the position static. Negative one means go short, right? Now you combine the signals. Again, this is just moonshot specific because at the end you're gonna end up with a signals data frame. Example on the rebalance right here and even has some nomenclature, right? Keep only the last signal of the month and fill it forward. Um, and then closes on index and the method is the fill forward. So that's how we end up with our signals. I'm not gonna get into the signals, the target weights, and honestly, I don't use them a lot. Usually I allocate equal weights. So this is an inherent method to this class, and that makes sense. So like, I'm gonna be equal on my allocations to my longs and my shorts. Weights is the position and the period day after the signal. Again, not to get super far into it, but it receives a data frame of allocations and should return a data frame of positions. This allows for modeling the delay between when the signal occurs and when the position is entered and can also be used to model non-fills. Pretty cool. The positions to gross returns, this you can actually adjust quite a bit um, in the way that you want to look at how well your backtest is doing, right? Like you can take more conservative looks based on the type of strategy you have or less conservative approaches. For this one, it's pretty simple, right? We're gonna enter on the open. So picture we're, we're gonna buy our positions at 6.30, right? So our today's open, to tomorrow's open, right? So it's our opens of our prices, that's when we're gonna enter the position. And the gross returns are gonna be the percentage change and then the position shifted forward just to make sure that they're matched, right? So I wanna know, for example, when I bought Apple today and I look at Apple tomorrow, what was the percentage change in Apple, right? And then the same thing for all the other shorts, right? Like if I shorted uh, Johnson & Johnson today did it also go down and I made money on that position, right? So that's gross returns. And then here's the broker commission. Yeah, it's half a penny. So that's just an easy class that you can throw in for what you anticipate your brokerage commissions to be. Um, you can have none in the beginning. You don't have to have this class variable, but it's obviously helpful, especially if you're trading a high volume number of stocks because commission will eat a lot of the profits, right? It's like another gotcha. Um, but this is the guy that's mainly gonna be running. So when we get back into our moonshot strategy and we go to our moonshot back test, which I'm going to make the next video, please rate, subs like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you guys pretty quickly about how this strategy actually ends up performing.